check out the garden. We got a few different rows. We have one row of uh, uh, lettuce, different mixed greens that are coming in for the first time. They're budding up. This row is going to be spinach. We planted a few testers, see if they would take, and then uh, the rest is just seeded a few days ago. We got right here, we have tomato. This is a uh, Roma tomato in this stretch. The middle stretch, I forget. The middle stretch is speckled Roman, and the last stretch is spinach. This right here is yellow onions and red onions. We've got kale in this row right here. Of course, the bird netting to keep the birds out because they were the birds were uh, coming in. Um, we've got carrots that are going nuts in this row. Summer squash in the front, winter squash in the back. We got sugar snap peas going down here, uh, and we have uh, broccoli in the first row and broccoli in the second half of that row. And this right here is uh, sweet peppers. So we'll check back in every month, every week. Let's see how it's going. So this one over here, we planted uh, sweet corn in all of these basins right here, and it's coming through, you can see. And over here, and over here, and over here, and over here. I like doing wheatgrass, because when I do the wheatgrass shots, when I grow it, it's about 16 times cheaper than uh, you know, buying it in the store. So I got wheatgrass trays that take all the excess water so it's waste, so it's not wasted. I got um, Brussels sprouts in these four, and we got Anaheim and jalapeno peppers in the back. So let's come see the peppers. So you can see I covered the I covered the wheatgrass with uh, palm tree leaves because you're supposed to keep it in the dark as it grows, so that the chlorophyll doesn't get damaged. So we can take this off now, and that's it starting to grow. This way I can just compost these, uh... hey, get back guys. I can just compost these palm tree leaves. So this is the, this is only about a five day old wheatgrass. This is about a week and five day old wheatgrass. So this one also five days. And the one over here, a week and five days. And these front ones are jalapeno peppers. And the back ones are um, Anaheim chilies. And uh, I get mesquite beans everywhere. So these, my mesquite trees put pods all over the place. So I'm growing a few of them right now for the front yard, but all these excess ones, I either eat them, I get into the tortoise, or I just, I have so many, I just pull them out. So that is the garden. And we'll check back in about a week. And we'll see how it's going. Um, then, we got a bunch of trees. Every one of our trees is edible. This is a goji berry tree. So, you know goji berries have a lot of antioxidants. I've never had a fresh one. I've only had the ones look like red raisins. So, hopefully we can get some real goji berries. We'll keep checking on that. This is the first year of this pomegranate. This pomegranate was about the size of the goji berry. And now look at the size of it. Just in uh, like five months. So, just put a little bit of uh, a vitamin B1, a little bit of steroids, and no, just kidding, no steroids. That's Leo the tortoise's den. This is this is going to be a xeriscape. So when we check back next time, you'll see a bunch of cactus, edible cactus growing inside here. Mm, you can see him in there right now. He's actually okay. where is he? What are you going to look for? Yeah. All right. This one is uh, an Asian pear that has three different kinds of Asian pears on it. So it's grafted three different. Uh, with three different styles of Asian pears. You can see we got a couple growing right here and down over here. And there's a brand new flower this morning right inside there somewhere. I tried smelling it, they don't smell like much. There's a little baby guy. And uh, the flower's right here. So you can see they, they bud up and they get flowers. And this one made it through the summer through 120 degrees in Arizona, we're in Phoenix. And this is the last day. Today's the last day of 105. So hopefully by tomorrow it'll be 98 and we'll be uh, changing the seasons. So I like to plant with the change of the seasons, just when you feel it's getting cooler, plant, and when it's getting warmer, plant. This is a peach tree. And you can see all the new growth. 
it kind of held on and just kind of stabilized during the summer and now new growth on the peach tree. Um, everything that's green is new, everything that's kind of yellowy is old. Um, then over here, this is a Garden Prince almond tree, which uh, needs to be pollinated by another almond tree. So you have to put it within 20 feet of a different kind of almond tree. So just out of coincidence, there happened to be another almond tree growing right over here called an all-in-one, an all-in-one almond tree. And this one, I kind of didn't know if he was going to make it because he started turning brown, but in the last couple weeks, you can see all the new growth is getting close, especially on this stock. All this new growth all in there, he's doing fantastic. So then over here, we have, this is a black uh, mission uh, fig tree. And these guys have really interesting leaves. Looks like almost like a, like a deer's antler. So you can see how they get pretty big. And this one, we already ate about eight figs off it. Because when we planted it, it already had some fig buds on it and they grew. So this has only been here, all these trees are only about five months old or five months planted, there was a little sapling. This is a grapefruit that almost died. And, I mean, it was fried. I mean, Arizona heat, we had, it was so hot. This is 2011, in the summer it was so hot. We had 120, we had 118, we had, just was relentless. I mean, it's 105 and it's October, it's almost October the 1st. So, um, this guy lost everything. I had a canopies over a lot of these guys to protect them like uh, bamboo stakes with canopies on top. So this guy now is free. And look at all the new, all this is new, everything. He was just sticks. He's even got a nice grapefruit growing right here that I'm hoping will become a grapefruit. So over here, this is a desert ironwood tree. And this ironwood tree was the size of the goji berry tree. And they told me at the, um, at the nursery that it was gonna be a very slow growing tree. But look at this thing. This thing is the fastest growing tree in my yard. I mean. This thing was the size, if you rewind this video, it was the size of the goji berry tree. Now look at the size of this guy. I mean, so he puts off an edamame like you get in a Japanese restaurant. It's an ironwood edamame that's very protein rich and uh, nutrient dense. Back over there is a lemon tree. Uh, this one over here is an ice cream uh, banana palm. So Say that again. This is an ice cream uh, banana palm and it's gonna grow bananas that apparently taste like vanilla ice cream. Little small guys. So he puts off a new leaf about once every two weeks. But recently the little ones at the base died. So these are the newer leaves. And you can see he's got a new one coming right here. If you get, if you see right here, this one coming up right there. I don't wanna pull it, but this is a new leaf about to pop out and then come out. And then this will be the pergola that will be a cross beam pergola. And these are different kinds of grapes. We got um, a flame red, we got Thompson red, we've got a Zinfandel in the back corner, we've got a, um, a Merlot grape right here, and a Chardonnay. Not a Chardonnay, a Cabernet. So this is the Merlot. I think the Merlot has the cutest leaves. And we had a praying mantis on here for two weeks. We just left yesterday. Um, so that was pretty cool. And then uh, last thing over here. This is the kumquat tree, and it's gonna put off little tiny oranges called kumquats. And eventually you can see the dark mulch I have inside here. I had mulch in a lot of the um, mulch basins because it keeps the moisture in, but um, a lot of it gets blown around, so I gotta re-mulch a lot of these uh, plant basins, tree basins. But this one still has fresh mulch. All these bushes over here are edible. See our basil that made it through the summer? pepper in that uh, kennel. This one is, uh, this is my favorite because it's a Mexican oregano bush and uh, these are really fragrant like for salsas and that sort of thing and he, uh, we planted them, he was only about that big um, and the dog ate him down to two leaves. He ate everything when I was inside so um, I thought it was dead. I kept it going and look at it. It's the biggest bush. This is only like four months. And it's gone from two leaves to this in four months. Yeah, so I mean, it's crazy. And then this one is, it puts off bean pods that I guess you can eat. It's a red uh, fairy duster, but it's not really edible. But what this one does is this is the biggest attractor of uh, hornets and bees and dragonflies and grasshoppers and praying mantis. 
and hummingbirds and everything that's going to pollinate my other trees come to this guy. I mean, you see during the day, this one and this one, the fairy duster and the Mexican oregano are the most active with insects that are going to come and pollinate. Like hornets are not necessarily bad hornets. I mean, hornets are really good for pollinating. You don't, uh, if you don't have hornets and bees and things like that, you're not going to get a lot of pollination. So they're, they're a good insect. We got rosemary down here. We got jojoba, which will hopefully be uh, fruiting at some point. We have passion fruit vines, which are going to be on, so they put off actual passion fruits. We got sage, which took a hit, but it's coming back. We got chuparosa, like you've heard of the chupacabra, the Mexican goat sucker. The chuparosa is the red sucker, and this puts off pink, pinkish red flowers that are edible and taste like cucumbers. This is a thyme bush, another jojoba. So I'm hoping if I got two jojobas, um, they put off really interesting nuts that you can be, turn into oil but they need to have a male and a female. So I'm hoping that if I got two, I'm, I'll luck out and get a male and female because you can't tell when they're that, that young. And then last thing over here. So we just got some, uh, the, some catnip growing for the cats because we have an outdoor enclosure so they're all safe inside here and uh, you see I didn't clean it yesterday so they got I got mulch inside their litter boxes because it's outside so you don't need to have cat litter which is expensive and sometimes can stick to the cat etc etc so we just use mulch and it's super cheap it's 250 for a bag and it lasts for you know multiple months I mean I'm probably saving I have six cats and they go indoor, they have outdoor connecting tubes that go to the inside of the house. And I probably save hundreds and hundreds of dollars a year in cat litter just by doing the mulch. Catnip growing here so they can try to catch it, that way they don't eat it all at once. Down here, caged in is catnip, oat grass, barley grass, wheat grass that they lay on so they smash it but they love it. And uh, they love these bricks, they just, they lay on these all day. And this is a, is a golden fig tree. So this one was in a pot and it was a, a cutting off one of my uh, friends' trees. He's a landscaper, just gave me the cutting. We put it in the pot and didn't do anything for a long time, for like six, eight months. And I thought it was dead, so I stopped watering it for like two weeks and I felt bad. So I watered it again and um, it, it came out. So it almost like it needed that drought and then it popped. So this is him now. And so I'm hoping he'll grow up and shade the house and shade the cat enclosure. And that is the yard. We got orange trees out front, and uh, mm -hmm. we'll have another video coming up on, if you saw during this video, these almost like look like coffins, these pits. I'll show you out here. Mm -hmm. You're the luckiest cats in the world, I think. Look at your house. Look at the dust there, we're running. Yeah. <laughs> so these pits right here, we'll show, I'm gonna show you the process we're gonna take. We live in Tempe, Arizona, and I'm gonna show you the process of taking gutters on the house, putting it into a funnel that goes into the ground, so that whenever it rains, you get an, you know, you get about an inch of rain during the monsoon, during any rains in Arizona, you get an inch of rain over a course of about a thousand square feet of roof space, and you're talking about 600 plus gallons of water. So all that water, this one, laying in the mud. In the mud, it's like getting dirty. Mud. So you take all that water, instead of wasting it into the, off your house and runoff, I mean, most of that doesn't even go to the sewer. Most of that water runs off into the, into the ground and just doesn't do anything, it evaporates. So we're gonna put it into these mulch pits. We're gonna cover them with a half tank and then at these trenchways, they're going to go to each tree so that I'm going to have hopefully nine trees off the grid with water harvesting and three trees off the grid with gray water. So that's going to be coming up in the next video. We're going to show you the process of setting those up. It's very cheap, but also very um, uh, environmentally friendly. Thank you.